And a lot of people get this wrong. This is why this is going to be the most useful video on YouTube. And the breaker is tripped. In that previous clip, we purposely tripped this circuit using this equipment. We use this wrench. You can see the burn marks on it. You can see how serious an electrical burn can be. We tripped this to show you an example of what a trip circuit would look like if something got shorted out. We're gonna show you what to do if you find that your plug is off and you don't have power to a certain receptacle in your house or lights or something like that. This is a Federal Pacific panel. Uh, not the best, but obviously still works. We're gonna shut off our circuit. We're also gonna take the cover off. I'm gonna show you how to take this cover off safely. If you're worried about electricity or scared of it, this is something you wanna do at your own risk. And I'm not saying to do this at your house. I'm saying this is what a professional would do. And when you try to reset that breaker, a lot of times it'll turn itself back off. That's because the breaker has detected a short and it's trying to turn itself back off because that's what they're designed to do. So you don't want to keep trying to turn this breaker back on. If it turns itself back off immediately, you're better off leaving it alone and calling a licensed electrician. We are a qualified licensed electrician, so we're going to show you how to fix this. Now, maybe you're a homeowner, maybe you are a service technician. Um, for sure, if you're a service technician, you need to learn how to do this. Chances are you already know, but there might be a few things in this video that you didn't know. So stick around. I've got a lot of tips. Here we go. So what we would typically find when the breaker is off would be one, we don't have a lot of lights. So you're going to need some kind of light. You're going to need a screwdriver, a Phillips and a flathead. This particular Klein screwdriver does both and it's a thousand volt rated. Just keeps us that much safer. I'm not going to explain how to check voltage and stuff. Um, that's for a different video. More or less you go hot to neutral and hot to ground. And that would tell you if you have voltage, you'd see zero volts on this. And we would know that we're safe to touch it. I'm very familiar with this circuit. We've already verified the voltage is off. Let's get into it. Once you get them completely out before you touch anything, you want to verify that the wires have no power because part of your problem could be the actual receptacle itself and the wire could just be loose and not sending power to this. So now that we have access to the side prongs here where we have our lugs, you want to re-verify your voltage to make sure that it's just not a loose connection because you could say, hey, I checked to make sure there's no power and then it was just a loose wire. You grab the wire and now you're toast. You got kids, whatever. Put some tape over the breaker and let everybody know in the house that you're working on something. Don't touch this panel. Here's our circuit tracer. We're going to turn it on. We're going to set it to tone here. So we set it to alternating tone here. And you can see this light turns on. Now what you want to do, you want to turn this down all the way where you can barely hear it. And a lot of people get this wrong. This is why this is going to be the most useful video on YouTube. Also really important, make sure that this breaker is in the off position before you attach that toner to it. What you do, you turn this all the way down and you're not going off of the sound, you're going off of this light. And that's why this Fluke 3000 is not a good tester they don't have this light. So let me show you. We're gonna roll this up one click. And you can see we're a little bit louder. But we still don't have a light on right there. We're gonna click it one more time. You can see it's even louder, but we still don't have a light. Click it up again. Now we're starting to get a faint light. You see where it's pulsing on and off like that? So when that light pulses on and off, you're almost ready. You click it up one more time.
and now we're ready to trace. So that's how you dial in one of these toners. If we simply left this at the default setting and we just turned it straight on, it starts off extra sensitive. And you can see the light's already turning on before we've even gotten close enough to the wire. So if you're in a box with multiple wires, this can get really confusing. So dial it all the way down and then just dial it in barely, keep clicking it until you see that light. Then you can start tracing. Perhaps one of the most important things to do when you're hooking up one of these tracers is to make sure you have a fully established ground. If you don't have a good ground, you need to get one, get an extension cord and rig something up to where you can attach this to a known good, clean ground source. Newer construction and stuff, your grounds might not be hooked up. So trying to trace things out might be a little bit tricky. So there's a tip for you. I've used a customer's oven hinge before because I was tracing out a light switch in the kitchen and I was able to use their oven because I knew it was grounded. That's just another tip. I know this system's grounded, so we're gonna use this ground. And this is gonna do two things for us. One, we're gonna be connected to all the other receptacles. So we can actually go through and trace what other receptacles are attached to this like this. See how the light's not turning on, but when we get closer to the wire, you'll see the light turns on. So this is a good way of tracing. If this was set up too high, you would, you would see a light on everything. So that's why you dial this in, four clicks, one, two, three, four. So here we are, we're back on our hot. Made sure we're dialed in. Now we can go back to the panel. But there's our wire right there. And look, we're on the wire right below it and we're barely getting a signal. No doubt that's our wire. Look how close we can get before we see a light. Even the circuit above it, see how the light is just pulsing? Clear as day what circuit we want. You kind of need to try to map out the circuits of the house and figure out what's connected to what receptacle and then start dividing that in half. That's going to be on the next video coming up. But this is the basics on how to connect a toner and how to make this work as efficiently as possible for you guys. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one.